All right, so we have looked at the array polyfills. We also looked at the bind polyfill that goes on a function. The next entity that I'll be taking you through is an interview favorite. Promise. Yes, I'm talking about the dreaded promise. It's a fairly old API, so I'm guessing you already know the fundamentals, but let's just quickly go through it anyway. A promise, just like anything else in JavaScript, is an object. This object represents the eventual completion or failure of an async operation. Anything that runs outside of order would be deemed as an async operation, like your set timeouts or REST API calls. Basically, when you create a promise using the promise constructor, you have to pass in a function to this promise. The function has access to two more functions as parameters, the resolve and the reject function. Inside this function, you run an async operation. On success, you use the resolve function to pass the data back. And in case of a failure, you use the reject function. Now this promise object can be used anywhere in your code and using the then and the catch methods on this promise object, you can get the result from your async operation. Now the promise constructor itself has a few static methods that you can use to handle multiple promises together. All these methods are pretty straightforward and easy to understand. The first one is promise.all. This method takes in an iterable of promises, which for the most part is an array and returns a single promise. So say we have three promises. All these promises resolve after a set time interval. So you can see here that this first promise resolves after one second, second one resolves after three seconds and the third one resolves after five seconds. When I pass these promises inside the promise.all method, you'll see that it again gives back a promise because you have this then method here. All the promises have this then method natively available. Inside this then method, we can pass in our callback function. And for now, you can see that I'm just console logging the result from all of these promises. So if I go inside my browser, you'll see that I get an array. And inside this array, we have the resolved messages from each of the promise. But if I refresh this, you'll notice that we only get the result after five seconds. That's the underlying behavior. This promise that's returned from promise.all fulfills when all the promises are fulfilled. That's why you get the result after five seconds. But then the next question is, what if any of these promises fail? Let's check it out. I'll update the normal promise so that it rejects instead of resolving. So over here, I'll just pass in a reject and let's see what happens. We do get the error after three seconds, but if I wait for the five seconds to complete, I don't see anything else being written. This means that promise.all will reject as a whole if any of the promises are rejected. It won't matter even if only one rejects and the rest still fulfill. So yeah, that is promise.all. The second method, which is promise.all settled is somewhat similar to promise.all. The key difference here is that in the case of promise.all settled, even if one promise gets rejected, it will still go through, fulfill the rest of the promises and bring back a result. So if I just change the promise.all method to promise.all settled, and go back to the browser, you'll see that this time it takes five seconds, which means all the promises were at least settled. I'm using the word settled here. Do not confuse it with resolved. Settled means either fulfilled or rejected. Any promise that's not in a pending state would be called settled. Now, if I open up this result array, it has three objects for each one of the promise. The object has a status and a value property. So the status is basically the status of the promise. And the value is what gets returned from that promise, depending on whether it's resolved or rejected. So this first promise was fulfilled or resolved and we get the value. The second promise was rejected and we get the value that's being passed to that reject function. And the third one is again fulfilled and we get the value that was passed to the resolve function. So this method would be the safest of all methods as it always gets you a result no matter what happens. The third method is promise.race. This method will resolve when any of the promises in the list settle. So if I change the method to promise.race, you'd notice that we get the response back in a second. I can swap the timeout delays for the first promise. So I'll just set this to 3000 and I'll set this to 1000. Now you'll see that we get the rejection error message after a second. Yeah. So it only cares about the promise that settled first, unlike the next method, which is promise.any. This promise.any method is kind of similar to promise.race. Only difference here is that this time it will actually wait for a promise to resolve. 
So even though we have a promise that gets rejected after a second, you'll see that it still waits for any other promise that gets resolved. So let me just use promise.any here. And if I go back to the browser, one second has already passed and we did not get the rejection error. But we do get this message, which comes from the first promise that gets resolved after three seconds. So it's going to return you the first promise that gets resolved. Even if there's a promise that gets rejected before this resolved promise, it's simply going to ignore the rejected promise and see if there's any other promise that's going to be resolved in the future. Again, what if all the promises get rejected? I'll just replace a resolve with a reject for these two promises. And now if we go back to the browser, you'll see that we do get an error, but this is an aggregate error. The message for this error says that all promises were rejected. I also want to check the error messages though. So what I'll do is first catch the error using the catch block and inside I'll use console.error to log the errors property that's present on the error object. You can see here that we have all these messages. Let me actually format this a little better. Now we can see that we have this consolidated error message which says that all promises were rejected. And then we have this errors array that gives us the error for each individual rejected promise. So yeah, this was a quick overview of the promise methods for which we'll create polyfills in the next video. It's asked very frequently in JavaScript interviews. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to get the video when it comes out. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.